So I'm back for a review today of a hand-built, locally built, ukulele. I was on the Ukulele Underground forum and got messaged by a gentleman named Alan last week. He said he had a friend named Larry Hinkle who builds ukuleles who would be interested in having me review one. So we met halfway between here and uh, DC and I picked it up and I've been playing it and looking it over. And um, today I get to review for the very first time a uke that's actually been provided uh, to me to take a look at. This is a Larry Hinkle ukulele. It is a uh, concert scale. ukulele and um, when I met with Alan we took a look at it and the word that he used was he finds these uh, the Hinkle ukuleles very organic they're very uh, and I agree with that uh, as I look at it they're uh, innovative he's not following the cookie cutter um, you know, a uke building kind of a thing. He's thinking of do, new and different things and taking the extra time to do them. So we're going to take a look at this. Now, one of the things that Larry does is he builds with unique woods. These are not your normal wood so i'm going to um if i can find it initially just tell you what this is built of and then we're going to look at it so the top is probably spruce it's from an old piano soundboard could be appalachian spruce the body is a white oak Neck and bridge are cherry. This is interesting. The nut and the saddle are lignum vitae, V-I-T-A-E. The strings are diadario, kind of like a nylaga. It's finished with a shellac sealer, top coat, spar urethane, satin sheen. So it's kind of a, a satin finish. So take a look at this. So we're going to look at some of the, the things that are a little bit different. First of all, this is that European spruce top from an old piano. The body is oak. And what he does is he builds from things like that, be it furniture, piano, or fallen trees. Cuts them and dries the wood for years and then builds. Really nice. Very unique saddle. As you can see, plenty of room there to lower if you wanted the action. Or all the, the, the action's great. Cherry bridge and fingerboard. A lot of people use cherry. Uh, I think it's fingerboard and bridge. Fingerboard bridge, the neck. What did he say about the fingerboard? Let's take a look at that. Just this neck and bridge or cherry. There's the neck. Now look at the profile. I want you to look at that. This part here is a little thicker. Another thing that's very unique, there's a couple things I want you to see here. He's got a tie bridge on here. But look at, can you see the body this is rounded this is not one flat and like it's not just glued on all it is but he has taken the time to round this off all around the body very unique you also notice some of the holes from beetle Beetles, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll find that some people like black bear build with the same thing, the natural wood, 
and occasionally there'll be a, a, a hole there. Totally natural, doesn't affect anything. A real nice finish, I like the satin. Now here he does something very unique with the head here. Here's your nut, it drops down. Instead of having it like this, he drops it down, it's somewhat flat here. You see that? And then the strings, the top ones, go through a string guide to here. Now, he uses the Grover tuners, which are fantastic. Very clean, inside and out. A lot of extra work. Now, one of the, there's two other things that he does. One is a la Gary Gill, is it's a bolt-on neck. And it's also a floating fingerboard, or some people will call that a cantilevered fingerboard, so you can actually see through. Now, the advantage to using those two together is obvious because if you need to do work on the neck, you simply undo the bolt and pull it off, and the fingerboard is not glued to the body. The theory behind a cantilevered fingerboard or a floating fingerboard is that because it's not glued to the soundboard, it's not muting some of the sound. This is where most of the sound comes from here, the soundboard. This is not affecting that because it's not touching it. So this is above the soundboard and then you have a bolt inside. Frets are a little bit on the, are a little smaller. And uh, now he does have side dots on there. I don't know if you're going to see those. I like this ukulele. The one thing that I would suggest to Larry, I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. And this, this I think this is probably, this was his personal uke, so he's probably had this a while. Is definitely do the side dots, but do them with the actual white. You just drill a small hole, a little glue, put it in, chisel it off. These are hard to see when you're playing like this. They're very difficult to see. I love the fact there's nothing on the fingerboard. I don't see the purpose for that at all. Because when I'm standing and playing, I can't see the fingerboard anyway. I'm looking at the side dots. A really, really interesting, uh, I would say, uh, neck-wise, I personally like the back of the neck. It's got a little more meat. It reminds me of my call of Sopranos. It has a little more back there. It's, I find for me, especially if the frets are small, if the frets are smaller and it's a thinner, I, I, a thinner top to bottom, it bothers my hand. The fingerboard width here at the nut is one and a half according to my tape measure, and the scale is 14 and three quarters. I would love to hear this with 
the Aquila sugars because it's um, they just have fantastic sustain. Really works well. Now he builds these in the soprano concert tenor baritone. I think he also does has done a bass in the past. Here's his card. And I will put the links as far as phone number and website, etc., email uh, in the YouTube down here so that you guys can take a look at that and contact him. The great thing about having access to someone like that, like Larry, is you can get literally a custom build, but you're not getting a cookie cutter build. You know, a lot of people will say they're getting a custom build and it really isn't that custom, you know. Uh, this is, these are all one-offs basically. I looked at his website. You can look at his website and go to his gallery and see some of the different sizes. And I mean, I don't see anything there that's, you know, a repeat. So, and that's kind of interesting. Look at the, look at the profile of that. Very unusual. And, uh, Love these, love the Grover tuners. So I would say all in all, Larry Hinkle, local builder here in the DC area. Uh, look him up. I'll put all the information in the YouTube video down here. And then um, check him out, contact him, ask him what he has. It sounds to me like he's got a ton of different kinds of wood and will build you whatever you want. All right, see you in a week. Bye-bye.